Hey everyone, I wanted to show you what I did today with the Sonics. I finally got a chance to actually start working on it. I spent three hours on building the airplane today and I started by just looking at the plans for about 45 minutes of going back and forth and seeing what I had done before and what I had thought I had done and like what other parts I was thinking I needed to do next. And this airplane for me, and I can't speak for any other builders, is a little bit chicken and egg because you think you need to put this component together first but then all of a sudden you realize if you do that then you have to disassemble it to make a component over here. And so I had to really make sure and spend the time double checking what the, the next order was. So for me, I thought that over there, um, the turtle deck needed to have the, the ribs put in next. But the truth of the matter is, what I really wanted to do was take the time to put in all of these um, uh, holes here with these spacers to make sure that uh, this particular longer on on both sides was 100% in place and sturdy. Once I got these pieces in, I went ahead and decided to work on the shoulder harness uh, webbing here. So right here on both of these two places is where you'll bolt in the shoulder harnesses for the occupants. And this is also a strengthening device for the actual airframe. So it makes it super, super solid. Um, it was interesting beforehand, it was reasonably solid. Now it is rock solid. And uh, while I was going at it, I went ahead and found out where this particular web right here fits in. Um, this particular one, I kept thinking it needed to go on top of the Lagerons, but it turns out you need to slide it between the two. Uh, the Sonics plans are extremely well done. However, sometimes it's just hard to, to figure out what they're trying to say with it. Um, so when it comes to this particular webbing, I'll go ahead and insert a video uh, from earlier today that shows the piece mocked up in the 40 size. So once that was done, I went ahead and I drilled it from the 40 to the 30 size, and then I pulled it all apart. I took my dimple dyeing tool, or not my dimple dyeing, I took my um, deburring tool and I deburred all the holes on all sides. It took quite a while to do that and um, got to the point where it was completely clean. I cleaned it with my lacquer thinner and then I went ahead and painted all sides with my self etching primer. I did not um, use the rivets to rivet into this particular piece yet because although I want it very, very strong, I can put uh, the Clecos in from the bottom side to hold the strength in here while I put my turtleneck on and try that for the first time to see how it fits. Um, so for right now, this was a good uh, iteration to get to the point where these parts are in and locked to the point where I want them to be. The webbing is here. This is probably what I'm going to be working on next, but theoretically, who knows, because I need to go reread the plans again. This particular piece is a, a very thick piece of 6061 T6 aluminum, and they had you bend it upwards just a slight amount so that way when you put your bolt in holding the upper part of the shoulder harness, it will sit properly and, and not bump into anything else. And so I had to bend it about five degrees. And I brought my bending brake out. Here it is now. Uh, what I did, uh, I'll go ahead and show a little video of what I did for the bending brake. So you can see what I did earlier. So how this works, if you haven't seen it before, is you put your piece of metal in. Here's a ruler, for instance. And you find out where you want to bend it, like the five inch line right here. You put, how about a seven inch line? Then you put the additional piece on top. And then you use your two C-clamps to hold it down. And you tighten them in. And generally speaking, you'd have a full clamp to hold the um, brake to the uh, plane you're working with. And then you grab on these two um, pieces and, and pull up and bend it. So that's how I bent that piece from earlier. And uh, now they're working perfectly. Uh, one thing I did want to mention though, is that I've been using self etching primer on all contacted sides of all the aluminum pieces. Um, when I made these bends earlier, you might be able to see from the previous video that there were little 
tiny, tiny scratches in the aluminum skin. And that mixed with the, uh, the bending surface area can lead to corrosion. So you really want to make sure that you use uh, the self etching primer to get rid of the chance of any corrosion happening. So that's why I chose to go with the self etching primer specifically for that as well too. Um, so one of the last reasons I want to mention why I have not riveted this piece in so far is I can still take this Laundron 100% out on both sides because I have to be able to countersink the Laundron aluminum in here and I need to dimple dye the outer aluminum so that way when I pull my flush rivets it will be 100% flush across. So I still have to do a lot of countersinking on these pieces. I did that with my lower uh, Laundrons a while ago and it was a lot of work but you can see that the um, the, the uh, flushness of that piece is just fantastic. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna keep working on it. It's looking great and uh, yeah, another good, good Tuesday. So cheers.